I'm joined now by Dr. Eric Lander, who is the ASHG William Allen Award recipient. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your career in human genetics. Well, my career in human genetics is an accident. I wasn't really intending to be in human genetics, but one day in 1985, I met David Botstein, who had come up with this brilliant idea to, about how to map genes for rare Mendelian traits. And David posed a question to me standing in the hall. Actually, it was more like a, a bombastic statement about it. it. Wouldn't be possible to do X, Y, and Z. And I said to David, nonsense, you could really do that. And that pretty much defined my career, was we were debating whether you could go beyond single gene disorders and look at polygenic disorders, things that had multiple genes that were involved. And it turned out that so many questions flowed from that conversation in the hall that I dropped everything else that I was doing and became a human geneticist. It was 1985, and I'm still here. And along the way to get answers to those questions, well, we had to join together to do things like the Human Genome Project and collect all the variation in the human genome. But finally, we actually have answers to those questions that Botstein posed in the hall. And the answers to those questions, the Human Genome Project. Talk about the impact as we have moved forward from that time. Well, what's the impact of the Human Genome Project? I think it's best summed up <laughs> by a conversation in lab meeting that happened with my lab group a few months ago where one of the young students, we were talking about something and, and finding a gene and this, this light went off in his head and he said, how did you guys get anything done before the Human Genome Project? In other words, it was inconceivable. It was as, as if he was saying, how did you like sail around the world without knowing where all the continents were? How did you do anything? You know, like people will say in a decade or three, how'd you get anywhere without GPS on your phone? So the Human Genome Project is something we take just utterly for granted, and it's something we should take utterly for granted. But the idea that you didn't have to spend five or 10 years marching to a gene, but you could look it up on your phone, that you could find all the genetic variation you know, in the human population at frequencies above a percent or so, that, you know, just that all this information about human genetics was at your fingertips was something that was inconceivable when it first got talked about in the 1980s and 1990s, and it's now essential. But it really has given us sort of the GPS, as it were, to follow certain research projects and learn more about variants in the population. Oh, and what it's done is it's given us answers to questions we didn't know to ask. Back at the beginning, people were thinking about how do you map genes for a simple Mendelian disorder? Well, now we can ask, what about the hundreds of genetic variations that contribute to schizophrenia or heart disease? Or how can we use genetic variation to look at the effects of natural selection in the human population? What's been under positive selection over the course of the last five or 10,000 years? Or how do we compare the genetic variation between humans and mice and dogs and kangaroos and figure out what evolution has been up to? Indeed, almost any question you wanna ask, if you can turn it into a question about the genome sequence, you can answer it, well, so much faster than you could have ever imagined before. We're getting a lot of data these days. Talk about ways to apply it better. Well, trying to apply the data is you know, really where the forefront of genetics is, figuring out how it can be maximally useful in the clinic, mm -hmm. going from being able to make risk, risk predictions for individual families to polygenic predictions for anybody in the population using information about the genetic variants that are correlated with the disease to tease out the underlying biological processes, connecting hundreds of non-coding variants whose functions we know nothing about to functional genes and putting them together to find out that, oh, I don't know, schizophrenia has something to do with the pruning of synapses in the brain or Alzheimer's has something to do with cell types like microglia that clean up debris in the brain. Things we would have never guessed. I think what makes genetics different than any other field is geneticists can go in without a prior hypothesis. We know life is smarter than we are, and if we ask the question in a completely open-ended way, 
we can get answers we never expected. Other fields of biology, other fields of science, they need a hypothesis first. Geneticists, we can look across it and say what things matter in an unbiased way. And it's remarkable because you can get answers that are so much cooler than you would ever thought of yourself. So I imagine one of the pieces of advice would be to be curious, but from an unlikely doctor in this field, what advice do you have for geneticists now? Oh my goodness. Well, I think the important thing for a young person coming into genetics today is to realize that we still know only a tiny fraction about how it all works. You know, a young person coming in might think, oh my goodness, I, I missed the Human Genome Project and I missed the documentation of all the variation in the genome and I, I missed this and I missed that and what's left to do, just clean up around the edges? No, I think we're about to enter over the course of the next five years an incredible period of intellectual ferment to really take the genetics of common disease and connect it to biological function because we now have the tools for the first time we, we have sequencing, which is cheap enough to think about doing millions of people. We have CRISPR technologies. We have single cell analyses of gene expression. It's as if young people today have, have shown up and the banquet table is finally set. And it's going to be an amazing intellectual feast. Well, that is inspirational as your career has been. Thank you so much, Doctor. Pleasure to be here. SHGTV is brought to you by the American Society for Human Genetics annual meeting in San Diego. For more videos like this, click on the links and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.